Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, uh, new lecture topic uh, which is image classification techniques of uh, digital image processing of remote sensing data cores. Uh, as we know that uh, images, satellite images are continuous data and sometimes if we want to uh, uh, convert them into form, some forms of maps so that uh, the ready, uh, you know the reading quality of images becomes better. Uh, people those who do not know how to interpret images can also make sense out of that and uh, reduce the number of uh, classes uh, which are present in image to just few classes as per our requirements is called image classification technique. So as we can see here uh, that uh, in this one uh, image classification that this is the science of uh, turning remote sensing data into meaningful categories. So, we are from continuous we are going for discrete data sets or meaningful categories which are representing surface conditions or classes and ultimate aim is feature extraction. And uh, this uh, uh, also we say is a spectral pattern recognition this procedures classify a pixel base because it is a pixel base of this pattern of radiance measurements in each band more common and easy to use. So, uh, that if you are classifying a say false color composite you can do it three bands are there. So, three the classification will be performed on all three bands. There are different uh, classification techniques or divisions of classifications which we will discuss. Uh, like a spectral pattern recognition, there is also a special pattern recognition which classifies a pixel based on its relationship to surrounding pixels, the neighborhood and the more complex and difficult to implement. But anyway, both are uh, existing nowadays and third one is the temporal pattern recognition. As mentioned in my previous lecture that nowadays availability of archival data is becoming uh, much uh, more and uh, like uh, Landsat MSS data 1972 onward is available free of cost on net and therefore people are going for chain detection studies and in such uh, studies lot of data time series data is analyzed and in we want to detect the changes which has occurred say in last 40 years 45 years. So, if we are uh, our study or application requires that kind of thing then temporal pattern recognition that looks at the changes in pixel over time to assist in feature recognition. So, if we are having say uh, 10 images of after 5 years each we want to see how a particular feature area or ground has changed a landform has changed in all those years. So, that is temporal pattern recognition. Many such powerful tools are becoming available some standard image processing installation digital image processing softwares may not have but advanced uh, features are being added in these one. So, purpose of as I have already mentioned the ultimate aim is to use them the purpose of image classification in geologic terrain so that we can identify different rock features and uh, different rocks their lithologies also in mineral exploration alteration mapping very common one though in the li this list I have kept at the last but this is the most common application of image classification is land use land cover classification also the changes in land use and land cover because this is becoming a requirement in any large projects which involves large uh, part of the land so that the requirements for environmental clearance is preparation of land use land cover maps. So, if a suppose in an area a thermal power plant is proposed say in the year uh, uh, 2000 this is being considered. So, now uh, the in order to get environment clearance 10 years back data will be uh, used a land use map will be prepared because you are having through remote sensing data complete unbiased recordings of the land events and everything. So, 10 years old data is classified, the current data is classified and then after the coming of that thermal power plant again after 10 years again a land use map will be prepared and then will be to see that how land has changed 
uh, say in 10 kilometer radius or 50 kilometer radius around that power plant. So, because each project will bring changes on land, land cover and this is how it has to be assessed whether this change is really bad from environment point of view or not. So, for that land use and land cover is very very common also for change detection studies otherwise to assess certain things on the ground the current things vegetation types uh, it is extensively uh, classification techniques are being used which are uh, vegetation density based classification in forest cover mapping and others even in india forest survey of india is doing this so the vegetation types and vegetation density based classifications are also being employed in case of vegetation or in agriculture as well. And this is non exhaustive list, there are various applications of image classification. As mentioned, there are two basic types of classification techniques exist are known or have been implemented. One is unsupervised classification where minimum human interventions are required while classification is being performed on a digital image processing software. The other one is the supervised classification technique which where the training from uh, human interventions through human interventions are required. We provide training, uh, training set to the computer to the software to do the classification though it uh, it may be more accurate classification method but it requires many inputs uh, to perform the classification whereas in case of unsupervised classification we have to only provide the number of classes or categories we want to classify a particular image into different classification uh, uh, categories so this is aggregation into natural spectral groupings or clusters. So, the clusters like uh, if I am having a satellite image of a say flat terrain, I want to classify in 5 categories. What are going to be 5 categories might be like forest area, might be agricultural land, might be wasteland, water body and built up land. So, likewise I, I am clustering the pixels, those who are satisfying uh, these uh, 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 in a in three bands scenario, those who are satisfying these uh, spectral characteristics, they are assigned one color or one class, one category and likewise from continuous data, which is originally as a continuous data, you are making a discrete data that is classified image and no prior knowledge is required about the thematic classes. So, if you are good on image interpretations, just uh, study that image, as decide, decide how many classes can be there, assign the classes and the classification will be done. So, it is quicker, may not be as accurate as supervised classification, but large human interventions are required, many human interventions at different stages are required. Let us see. So, based on the looks like most and uh, kind of concept pixel categorization being supervised, the training sets have to be provided and uh, then uh, you say that these number of classes for which I have fed the training set accordingly and uh, that uh, it is classified. We will see all these details little later. So, the basic in uh, supervised classification is that this is the digital image, these are the training sets I have decided based on the uh, my interpretation, my understanding about the area, having prior knowledge of the area that water body, sand, forest, urban, corn fields, agricultural fields and hay fields. And these then I they are because they are having some digital numbers, a group of numbers, a range. So, that goes classification stage compare each unknown pixel uh, to spectral pattern assigned to the most similar category and then finally, the classification. So, here uh, the legend is like F stands for forest and uh, what W stand for water body and so on so forth. So, the this continuous image has been now discretized through supervised classification technique with human interventions. So, the training stage that is the training uh, while providing the training set data uh, determines the success of classification, how accurately you can select the training set uh, from the image. There is uh, so this classification maximum depends on your input 
and uh, that is the training set and classification stage and uh, that heart of supervised classification which is very much required this is most essential thing and as accurate you can collect the training sets as uh, accurate your classification results are going to be. Now here what we see that uh, this is the spectral curves of different natural uh, natural features which are present on the surface of the earth natural objects like uh, water will appear and uh, this is uh, you know the frequency chart is there. So you are having here number of pixels here you are having 8 bit scenario 0 to 255. So water is having generally less values a pure water will have less values and uh, uh, if we say infrared scenario or vegetation is having a this situation land is having this situation. So all features which are present will behave differently in different parts of EM spectrum that we know. Now when we plot a, a, a say 2D scatter plot what we will find that all these land features or land objects are getting clustered at different locations in a 2D plot as showed in, in a, this is schematic. And uh, if we go for uh, because generally we go for classification having a uh, say false color composite or a colored image then you are you have to think in a three dimensional scatter plot and there uh, the uh, this thing can also be very easily done. But here and because this is schematic so color codes and uh, you know clustering or grouping is very obvious but in uh, natural when you go for a uh, real operations you may not find uh, so uh, distinct clustering. So then user has to decide that the which pixels will go in which class. There are always a boundary cases and there the judgment of a a, an expert who knows something about image interpretation will be required. So in supervised classification better for cases where validity of classification depends on a priori knowledge. So prior knowledge is there whoever doing classification you can uh, achieve a very good classification. Conventional covers classes are recognized in the scene from prior knowledge or other map layers. Uh, um, if you are having some other maps and uh, looking those maps for the corresponding areas you can decide your training sets as well. And training sets are chosen for each those fee classes where you find that this is vegetation area, this is water body, this is bare soil and so on so forth. And each training site class results in a cloud of points in three say take example of three dimensional so in three dimensional scatter plot and uh, that is uh, n dimensional measurement space representing variability of different pixels spectral signatures of that class. And uh, like here this is the real example that these are the based on the uh, prior knowledge and spectral characteristics and knowledge of interpretation techniques one has classified given different these are the training sets the final classification image is not here but these are the training sets have given and for different uh, clustering uh, or the see for say if I take this one then I am having uh, this is uh, sun sunlit area. So I am having uh, this uh, green color and there are two it is not necessary that only one training set for each class has to be selected. You can have even 10 training sets for one class. So declaring that this belongs this green area this green area belongs to the same class and likewise I have given so many classes here. Later on you realize that uh, there is not much difference so you can group these classes that means number of classes you can further reduce to just few classes that is also possible. Here is say in the in water body two types of classes have been given. One may be for having a sediment or turbidity which is very high close to the coast in deep water you are having more clear water so accordingly a class a different class has been chosen. But later on if you realize that I just want to classify as a water body 
I do not want to discriminate between uh, water body, within the water body, whether it is having turbidity or not. Then you can regroup and can reduce number of classes. So, that is always in the at the time of post processing. So, that the next step here, once you have uh, collected the training sets, next step is to computer to assign each pixel to a spectral class is appearing belong to their area. And uh, then clustering algorithm looks at clouds of pixels in a spectral measure and space that is n dimensional scatter plot from training areas to determine which cloud is given non training pixel falls. And uh, like here in this uh, through this schematic a relationship has been shown here like th this cluster of pixels of three bands are uh, having training set of this uh, area. And likewise, uh, you know, these different different uh, clusters are shown here. And uh, so, once these clusters have been identified, then this is uh, done for the entire image, and then you see the final result. So, then this supervised classification algorithm includes. And there are various uh, options are available during the supervised classification. One is called minimum distance to mean classification or also called chain method. Another one is the Gaussian maximum light likelihood classific classification, parallelly piped classification and each uh, uh, these options under the supervised classification will give you a slightly different results which we will see why these results are different because the grouping of clusters in which a, a class you would put a, a, a cluster that decision is will be made differently if we apply these three different techniques that is the minimum distance to mean Gaussian maximum likelihood classification and parallelly piped. So, the simpler method is considered is the minimum distance in which a theoretical center point of point cloud is plotted. These uh, basically is these are the pixels of three bands based on mean value and an unknown point is assigned to the nearest of these and that point is then assigned the cover class. So, here few examples are given through these uh, scatter plots two dimensional scatter plot examples are here that this is the uh, original scatter plot having two bands involved. Now, the clustering here is done like this. The, uh, the This is how these are getting plotted based on their spectral characteristics in two different bands. If I go for minimum distance to mean then a point is plotted here and then search is made that which cluster is having minimum distance. And uh, within that all these pixels will be classified as one category in this one is schematic it is the wasteland. For this cluster it is the sand body and so and uh, maybe this is for the water body and likewise a, in a minimum distance to mean classification is made. But when we go for uh, like a parallel pipe classification a here a box it is also called sometimes box classifier a box or a square is plotted along the cluster or in the alone volume. So, all those pixels are falling, they will fall in one category. So, rather than having a minimum distance to mean, here we are just blocking uh, or uh, creating boxes around these. But what will happen like here there are scenarios where uh, the some pixels are falling in two boxes or maybe three boxes together. And therefore, you may have a wrong classification because of overlapping characteristics. So, you do not have. So, there might be another uh, uh, option which is the precise parallel pad. So, instead of just creating always box, you can create and surround that cluster with a not only a box and can have a separate uh, uh, classes for each cluster and then you will have. So, if I go for this kind of classification on this image and then go for this definitely I am going to have different results. So, different methods of spectral classification can be represented diagrammatically here by reference to bivariate plots. The maximum likelihood is another scenario here which is based on the probability that the contours express probability that any point belongs to a particular class which is the basis of maximum likelihood classification. So, this is another very popular 
and supervised classification technique that as you go away from the center of the cluster, the probability or the accuracy will reduce. So, the probability of falling in that cluster reduces. But uh, at one stage you have to say now this is uh, the, these beyond these pixels beyond in within this cluster plot they do not belong to this class. So, the limit has to be achieved. So, this is that is why it is called maximum likelihood method beyond that you do not have. So, two classifiers examples are given the real one one is based on the minimum distance to mean classification technique and uh, again maximum likelihood uh, classifier. When you uh, look very carefully you would find that both techniques are classifying the same image with different results. Now, it is up to you to uh, accept and how you would accept you can assess the errors if you are having the ground information you can verify that and then come back again improve the your classification clustering and choosing the area and then you can reclassify the thing. So, that is another advantage, but each classification options within the supervised classification technique will produce slightly different results. Now, in case of unsupervised classification the input is only a number of classes and user is required a human that to only that extent human interventions are required. So, the same cluster plot is shown here we say this belongs to spectral class 1, spectral class 2, 3, 4 likewise. So, assume it is no prior information knowledge is required computer groups all pixels according to their spectral relationships and looks for natural clustering assumes that data is in different cover will not be belonging to the same group. That means, the two ground different two different ground features will not have same type of uh, spectral characteristics. This is the assumption in unsupervised classification. Once created the analyst assesses their utility and can adjust clustering parameters. That means, number of classes you can change. Suppose, I have initially I have gone for 10 classes I find that the output is unrealistic it is not really showing the uh, very accurate classification. So, I may uh, group few classes and then can go for say 6 I may get a very realistic uh, classification results. So, after comparing the reclassified image based on spectral classes to the ground reference data, the analyst can determine which land cover type the spectral classes correspond to and then you can in the lesion you can assign whether it is forest, agriculture land, water body, based land and so on. So, head advantage over supervised classification because the classifier identifies the distinct spectral classes automatically many of which would not have been apparent in supervised classification and if there were many classes would have been difficult to train all of them. So, th because here everything is being done by computer for this clustering and uh, grouping. So, you it may sometimes it may provide you good results may not, but in supervised classification you are having better controls and uh, it is not required to make assumptions of what all cover classes are before classification and clustering algorithm include k means texture analysis and so on. So, there are also different options are available with unsupervised classification. So, one example the same image with the number of classes initially are 15 clusters and they are assigned different colors. Now, based on the no ground knowledge like for example, I know this is water body, but having turbidity. So, if I say this is the uh, color 7, then I assign a water and uh, turbid water and the water which is dark blue like this one, then I may assign this one or this uh, may be the cluster 2 I assign as a clear water and likewise I can maybe the sand body is here. So, this instead of writing cluster 14 I will write a sand body or beach. So, this type of uh, classification is much quicker of doing classification both options supervised and unsupervised are available and uh, with both options different further options are available for classification, but uh, every classification will have some errors because after all from a continuous data 
nature is also continuous in that sense. From continuous data, you are discretizing, you are reducing number of, suppose if I am having 8 bit image, that means I may have two, uh, 256 classes in an image. Now you are reducing those classes to 8 and that means they are while re re uh, doing this kind of data reduction, I may introduce some errors and those errors if they are checked with the ground data can be minimized and you, we can have a very realistic classification maps based on the satellite image. But as I mentioned, this is extensively used spatially for land use, land cover classification, forest, in agriculture, in geology and so on. Now, this uh, the, in this pre first part I have discussed mostly in the multispectral domain that when you are having multiple channels you do the classification especially on false color composite and so on. But if you are having just single band then these options are, uh, are no use to you. Then the best thing is the simpler one is called the density slicing. So, the density slicing is suited for single band classification. Here, the pixel values distributed along x axis of an image histogram are divided into series of analyst as per user defined intervals or slices. Like you are having a loaf of bread, you can slice. So, the thickness of each slice can be decided by the user itself. So, number of uh, slices you want to create out of a bread loaf, how thick it is going to be or whether the thickness has to be uniform or it can you can have varying thickness that all can be chosen by the user itself. So, all DN values falling within a given interval within one slice are displayed at a single DN in the output image. So, from a continuous image like a loaf of a bread, say continuous you are slicing it, maybe at equal interval or maybe at varying intervals. And then the process of converting the continuous gray level tone to an image a series of density interval or discrete classes, slices each corresponding to a specific digital image or area. Here is the example that you are having an image I have classified into few classes. So, pixel values say falling between 0 to 15 are assigned red color. Red color might be a type of land class or feature which are present on the uh, on the ground uh, pixel 16 to 32 are green and so on so forth. And once say uh, you have done the classification like this, maybe equal interval classification or uh, you can employ certain classification techniques. Instead of in equal interval, you can have equal area classification, you can have uh, quantile classification, you can have natural break classification on single band image and likewise you can create classes here. Mainly it is suited for single band. For multispectral, then you choose supervised or unsupervised classification. There are, uh, because class, if you look the publications which are coming in digital, on digital image processing in remote sensing journals and other journals, you would find that lot of development is taking place with classification techniques. So, apart from basic supervised and unsupervised and then different options associated with that, people are developing new and newer techniques based on new mathematical approaches, how these clusters would be uh, decided that they belong to this particular class and not. So, there are various techniques are coming, one is another one is based on object oriented classification or uh, object based classification. So, in past most digital image classification was based on the processing of entire scene pixel by pixel and this is commonly referred as the per pixel, pixel based classification. So, all these so far whatever the classification techniques which we have discussed based on pixel, pixel by pixel or spectral classes. Whereas, object oriented classification techniques allow the analyst to decompose the scene into many relatively homogeneous image objects, homogeneous areas and that will have one class definitely. So, referred as a patches or segments as we when, when we were discussing the data and remote sensing or digital data compression techniques, we were also looking 
a homogeneous area. So, see here also the homogeneous areas are searched and then they are assigned a particular class using a multi resolution image segmentation process. So, this one. So, this uh, uh, there are various as mentioned that various options are available with the object oriented classifications and uh, different images uh, because uh, the problem here is that we are going for uh, from uh, initially we had a relatively as per today's uh, uh, reference we relate we had relatively coarser resolution images like Landsat MSS or even TM. But now we are having very high resolution images. So, the, the conventional classification techniques may not suit now high resolution images. So, we have to evolve a new classification techniques. Few basic classification techniques we have discussed, one more object oriented classification techniques are there. Classification based on neural networks or fuzzy logic all are being uh, either being tested or implemented into various image processing softwares. But as mentioned earlier, each classification no matter which one you apply will produce a different output and more, more complication com becomes when for the same area if you apply say classification which is based on neural network. So, if I am having an image pre monsoon image and post monsoon image, but my classification technique remains same, still I will have two different results. Not only the because the classes, the land features have changed, the vegetation cover has changed, water body size has changed, not only that, but the classification results, the error part will also be different. So, it is it becomes virtually a scene based classification technique that the, the uh, you know the classification which you perform on one scene when it is changed maybe of a different season your classification will change. So, the, uh, the but all kinds of options are now becoming available for uh, different types of uh, classification. So, uh, this brings to the end of this discussion. Thank you very much.